Welcome to class. This is Physics, Introduction to Electrodynamics. I'm working through uh, Griffith's fourth edition, Intro to Electrodynamics, and we're in chapter one. And today we're going to do line integrals. Um, and, you know, we have to do this because we need it later. Uh, so I'm really just going to do one example, but I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to technically do two examples. Okay, so the, the problem is from the book, it gives a vector function, and we want to integrate the line integral from point 0, 0, 0 to point 1, 1, 1 along that path, and then do it along a straight path. So I'm going to do it along that path, straight path, and then I'm going to do the straight path in Python, because you know I like to do things in Python. You know that, right? So what is a line integral? I think the best version for you to think about for a line integral is the definition of work because that's really what we're going to do. We're going to deal with electric potential, and, and that's from the work, right? That's where potentials come from. So if I have a constant force and a constant displacement, I can say the work is F dot delta R. So we can do this for any function. I'm going to call it the work, even though they have a V function right there for the velocity. Or it's not velocity, it's just a V. Now, what if the force is not constant? What if delta r is not constant. Let's just imagine that we have some path like this. So here I have some point A to right there, and I'm going along a curved path like that. And I want to calculate f dot dr. Well, let's just, let's just break this into short little pieces. So I'm going to have a dr right there, a dr, a dr. I'm just breaking into three. And then during each one of these, I have a force. Let's say the f is that way, and then it's like that, and then it's like that. So during each of these short little intervals, I can calculate f dot delta r. Uh, it's, I have the vector force, I have delta r as a vector, I can do the dot product. And then I can just add up f dot delta r along that whole path. Well, could we do that an uh, infinite number of times and turn it into an integral? Yes, we can. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to integrate this function as a dot product. And we're going to use this, these points right here. I'm going to erase the points because we don't really need to know them. Um, it's kind of hard to draw anyway. It's just easy to remember. Origin, x-axis, xy-axis, xyz-axis. Right, easy. one, one, one. Okay, so we're going to use Cartesian coordinates here. You don't have to do this in Cartesian coordinates. But in general, I'm going to say the work is the integral from A to B. Uh, let's call this O. o O to C. So it's going to call this, I call this point O, A, B, C. So this is point O to C of V dot, they use DL, I'll use DL. The book uses DL. Okay, V dot DL. Because that's what we're doing. It's, it's, a, it's like work. It is just like work. A line integral is just like work. Now in this case, we have uh, four unique segments. So we're going to have four different works. So I can say work is going to be work one plus work two plus work three plus work four. That's right, one, two, three, no three, there's just three of them. So we're gonna call this uh, work one is gonna be the integral from O to A, V dot DL. Work two is the integral from A to B of V dot DL, and so forth, and work three, so forth. And that matters. Okay, so let's just break it down one piece at a time. Let's just calculate work one. That's all I want to do. Calculate the work along that first path. So this is the work one is going to be the integral from point O to point A of V dot DL. Now, I know, I know V. What about DL? What's my infinitesimal path length? Now, be careful. It, you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter here, but you have to be very careful. In Cartesian coordinates, dl is always going to be the same thing. dl is going to be the vector dx, dy, dz. Now, you may say to yourself, self, hey, uh, we're only moving in the x direction along this first path, so shouldn't those be zeros? No, they should not. Uh, if you're moving in the negative x direction, should those be negative? No, they should not. Those things come from the limits of integration and the path along that you get, that you move. So we're going to keep DL that as that. For Cartesian coordinates, that's your path length element. Well, now I can do the dot product. So V 
dot dl is the dot part between this vector and that vector. So this is going to be x squared dx plus 2yz dy plus y squared dz, right? I just took the dot part between those two vectors. I can do that, right? Okay, now, do we have a relationship between our x, y, and z? Well, let's think about this. I'm going to just uh, sketch out this diagram right here. So here's, here's where we're starting, and we're going right here, and this is the x direction. So we're, this is our path. So my path is an equation. What is the equation of my path? Well, the equation of my path is uh, y equals, it's a 3D line, right? So I need two equations. y equals 0, z equals 0. That's the equation of my line. x goes from 0 to 1, but that's, that's my path, right? So if y is 0, then dy is the derivative of this, is dy. The derivative of 0 is, that's right, 0. The derivative of z, dz, is 0. Uh, so now I can use these four things in my equation up here. So I get work 1 is going to be the integral. Uh, let's just leave it as 0 0.0 to a, because we don't know our, our limits of integration yet. I have x squared. I have dx. I have plus 2. y is 0. z is 0. dy is 0. So those are all 0. Here I have y squared, y is 0, dz is 0. So this just becomes the integral from point O to point A, but I'm only integrating over x. So I, I need to know my x value. So this is x equals 0 to x equals 1, x squared dx. Now, I think we can integrate that. So let's do that. I get x cubed over 3 from 0 to 1, 1 third. Okay, so we're going to write, we're going to keep a little track up here. Work one is one-third. See how we did that? Okay, now we're going to go along the next path. So the next path was from here to in the y direction up here, like that. So um, v dot dl is the same. That doesn't change. What does change is my path. So in this case, my path is going to be equal to uh, x equals 1, uh, z equals 0. And in that case, dx is 0. dz is 0. So if I put those into my integral up here, I get work 2 is the integral from uh, b to c. Wait, I went from 0 to a, a to b. A to B. Uh, I'm going to put everything in. X squared is 1, because X is 1. DX is 0, plus uh, 2 times Y times Z is 0, DY, plus uh, Y squared times 0. So I get 0, 0, 0. And it doesn't really matter what I integrate along, right? I get 0. So work 2, 0. Okay, now we're on that last path. The last path is going from here in the z direction that way. So I'm going to say x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, um, and that's it. And so dx is 0, dy is 0. So work 3 is going to be the integral from point b to c of x squared times dx, which is 0, and x is 1 along that path. So 1 times 0, and then I have plus 2 times y is 1, times z is a variable I don't know, it changes, uh, and then, but dy is 0. And then finally I get y squared, which is 1, right, because y is equal to 1, and dz. So the only thing that survives is my integral in the z direction. So it's going to be the integral from z equals 0 to z equals 1, because my z value here is 0, my z value here is 1 of dz. And so I get, uh, I can integrate that, z from 0 to 1, and that's going to be equal to 
one. <laughs> I had to think for a second there. One. Okay, so work three is one. So now my total work is going to be the sum of those. So I get work is one third plus zero plus three thirds, four thirds. Did it. We got the work. Okay, now what if we do it in one fell swoop, right? So what if we go from point O to C in a straight line? Um, let's do that. Now, you may say, well, we already did it because we went from one point to the other and the work doesn't depend on the path. Aha, the work doesn't depend on the path for a conservative field. We don't know if this is a conservative field or not. So that don't cheat that way. So let's do this. I still have uh, V dot DL. Remember, that does not change. That depends on your coordinate system and your function. It does not depend on where you're going. That comes from the path. So that's still going to be the same thing. X squared DX plus 2YZ DY plus Y squared DZ. Now my path. Okay, so what's the, the line from the origin to the point 111? Um, it's, a, it's a 3D line, okay? But I can actually write this as X is equal to a constant, Y is equal to a constant, Z is equal to a constant. That's the definition. Or X equals Y equals Z. Okay, and that's important. So now we can convert this and then I can get this. DX equals DY equals DZ. So now I don't, I can switch it all over to one variable. Let's switch everything over to the X variable. So now my work is gonna be the integral from I'm using x, so I can say x is 0 to 1, that's my x value, x squared dx plus, okay, now here I have 2y, but y is equal to x, x, z is equal to x. So I get x times x is x squared, and then I get dx, and then over here I get y squared, which is x squared, dx, is dz is x. So this is going to be the integral from 0, x equals 0 to 1. I have x squared plus 2x squared plus 1x squared is 3x squared dx. So that's going to be 3 times x cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. Did I mess up here? Because this is going to give me, well, this is going to give me 3 thirds. I should get four thirds. Uh, okay, wait. x squared, 2x squared, x squared. x squared, oh, this, <laughs> I knew the answer. That's why I knew I'd made a mistake. <laughs> x squared, I did, I did simple math. Okay, so I get four thirds. And that's the same answer that we got before, right? So, does that mean that it's a conservative field? No, it doesn't. You have to do a different test. Um, just because two different paths give the same thing does not mean it's conservative. Uh, we'll get into that later. Okay, but we did it along two different paths. We got the same answer. Now we're going to do it numerically. So numerically, I'm going to break this into finite steps in Python. So that's going to be it's going to be kind of cool. Okay, so I have my same function, but now my DL is not that. So let's just draw this in the xy plane. I'm going to go from point O to point C up here. And this is 1, 1, 1. So I can calculate the vector. I'll calculate the vector r. So r is going to be uh, point C minus point O. Right? That's the displacement from here to there. So I have that. Now I can say uh, d, I'm going to call it dr dr is going to be equal to r over n, where n is 100. So I want to take 100 steps. That's my displacement for each one of these little steps. So I'm going to get a delta r, delta r, delta r, delta r. Now, I just need to calculate the value of the vector field at each one of those locations, whatever it may be, and then do d work is going to be v at that point, r, dot dr. And then I add up all the works. Let's do it. 
I'm not going to do it graphically. I'm just going to do it uh, in Python. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is using Python is to uh, define our function, our vector function. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say def, def v of r t. So in this case, I'm going to pass it some vector value. I want to pass it a vector, and it's going to return a vector. In the past, I did it as x, y, z, but I'm going to pass it a vector. And so then I'm going to return the vector uh, x squared, which is the x component of my vector that I passed to it squared. So that's rt dot x squared. And then my y component is going to be uh, 2yz, so 2 times rt dot y times rt dot z, and then my z component is y squared, uh, so rt dot y squared. So that I can give it any vector value and it will return uh, a vector function. Okay, so now I need to calculate, I'm going to say point O is vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, point C is equal to vector 1, 1, 1. So the vector R, let's call it, I'm just going to do dr in one fell swoop. N is equal to 100. dr is going to be equal to PC minus PO divided by N. Right? So PC minus PO is the vector from the initial point to the final point. So that will be a straight line. Now, if you have curve lines, you have to do something different. Now I need to make a loop. So I have my starting value, r is the vector 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to make a loop like this. Well, let's say work is equal to 0. I need, I need a number to add the work from each step to. So I need to start with the 0 number. Uh, let's say while r dot x is less than 1. So there's a couple ways you can do this limit. But I know my x value goes up to 1. So I'm just going to keep on adding this up until I get to 1. And then I'll stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate my work along that small step. So dw is going to be the dot product of v dot dr. I have dr. I, v is a function. So v of r, you see how that works? That's functions and functions, and dr. So that gives me the dot product. That gives me my work. I'm going to add that to my total. Work equals work plus d work. And now I just need to move my r value. So r is r plus dr. And that's it. And then I can print. I'll print w equals w. And you can't even see that there. Let's run it. It, did, it went on forever. I made a mistake. While r dot x, pc minus divided by n, work equals work plus d work, r equals r plus dr. Let's print this. I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, so that works. vr, let's print v of vector, let's say print v of vector 1, 1, 1. Let's see, is that too many prints? No, that should work. Okay, so to print that too. Oh, wait. Ooh. Return, aha, that's why. Return vector. Okay, now I got it. There. So there's my work, uh, 1.3. Let's just print out, um, print uh, four thirds. See how close it is. And 1.3, 1.33. What if I make uh, n larger? Let's do a thousand steps. And I get the same thing. So the numerical version works. There you go line integrals. A uh, link to this whole playlist on uh, electrodynamics down below in case you want to follow along. I'll talk to you later.